Commercial pilot Brody is running late to his flight, but promises his daughter that he will make it in time for New Year's Eve. On the plane, his co-pilot, Dele, notifies him that they are flying through some heavy weather. Brody offers a safer route to his superior, but it falls on deaf ears. Since the plane only has 14 passengers, they have to save on costs and are ordered to take a shortcut. Brody is hit with more unexpected news, he has to fly a fugitive homicide suspect, Louis, to Tokyo, accompanied by an officer. Brody doesn't have a say in the matter. After all the passengers get on board, the crew closes up and they safely take off. Dele and Brody, sharing personal stories of their families, bond over Brody's recounting of his daughter, the only family left after his wife's passing. Amid this camaraderie, their plane cruises above a looming storm, plunging into turbulence that prompts Brody to activate the seatbelt sign. The situation escalates as the turbulence intensifies, then momentarily eases, allowing Brody to reassure the passengers that it's just a typical flight challenge. However, tranquility is short-lived. The aircraft is jolted once more, driving Brody back to the cockpit where Dele informs him of a critical issue. A lightning strike has incapacitated the plane's electronics, severing communication with headquarters and leaving them to navigate blindly through dense clouds. The plane's systems have failed, making it impossible to transmit their location, and they face a dire countdown of 10 minutes to execute a landing before losing all power. In an attempt to find a safe path to land, they must pierce through the storm for visual guidance. Amid rising panic among the passengers, an officer's attempt to send a distress message is thwarted when he drops his phone. The stewardess tells him to remain seated, but both go after it. The plane loses control and the stewardess and the officer both die instantly. With just 4 minutes and 30 seconds of power remaining, they emerge from the storm, but it's too dark to see land. Louis, the handcuffed fugitive, eyes the keys on the officer's belt. A stewardess asks Brody what they should do next. With a heavy heart, he instructs everyone to brace for impact. As they prepare for a water landing, Brody spots land. With only 90 seconds of power left and uncertain of their exact location, they see only trees below, making a water landing seem safer. However, just as their power runs out, Brody sees a dirt road, their only option for landing. They manually extend the landing gear, and with Della's assistance, Brody manages to land the plane safely on the dirt strip. Bonnie informs Brody of the two casualties and retrieves the keys from the officer for Louis handcuffs. The crew then safely evacuates everyone from the plane. At the headquarters in New York, a team is quickly piecing together what happened. They call their crisis manager, David, who immediately scolds Brody's superior for cutting corners and sending the plane through a dangerous storm. They've also reached out to the government of the Philippines for help, but the authorities refused because of separatists, which David knew would happen, so he has already dispatched a private military. After a harrowing landing with no way to communicate with the outside world, Bonnie gives the keys to Brody for safekeeping. Brody gathers everyone, urging them to stay calm, and promises to do everything possible to ensure their safety and get them out of the situation. Brody and Dele inspect the plane's electronics, finding everything irreparably damaged. Despite the grim situation, Brody comes up with a potential solution. However, he first needs to address a more immediate concern, the presence of casualties on board. Taking the officer's gun for safety, Brody then turns his attention to the fugitive's possessions, examining a pocket knife more closely. Calculating the potential search area, Brody and Dele face a daunting realization. The search teams would need to cover over a thousand miles radius, making their chances of being found slim. The situation darkens further when Dele reveals they've landed on Jolo Island, an area under rebel control, devoid of government presence. Their safety is now seriously at risk. Brody changes into more practical clothes and breaks the news to the passengers. His plan is to find a radio tower they flew over and relay their location. Deciding to bring Louis for assistance, he unlocks the handcuffs. Meanwhile, a nearby villager informs Dadu, the leader of rebels, that a plane flew over them at night in its approximate location. On their journey towards the satellite tower, Brody asks Louis about his pocket knife, suspecting military experience. Louis reveals he served in the French Foreign Legion. Curious, Louis questions whether Brody has taken the officer's gun, but Brody stays silent. Moments later, when Brody looks back, Louis is gone. Meanwhile Dele tries to reroute power from the generator, and surprisingly, succeeds. In an eerie, abandoned building used for executions, Brody remains on high alert, gripping his gun for protection. Amidst the desolation, he discovers a non-functional phone. However, with some ingenuity, Brody manages to get it working and urgently calls the airline headquarters. Unfortunately, the dispatcher dismisses his call as a hoax, believing it's a prank call. As the call abruptly ends, Brody hastily repairs the connection and reaches out to his daughter, quickly informing her of their rough location. Scribbling down the details, his daughter is his hope for rescue. Suddenly, Brody is attacked from behind. In the chaos, he struggles to reach his gun but fails. The fight is fierce, but Brody eventually overpowers his attacker, leaving him incapacitated on the ground. Before he can catch his breath, the sound of gunfire pierces the air. 
Expecting the worst, Brody braces himself, only to find Louis entering, rifle in hand. Surprisingly, Louis has returned as an ally ready to assist. Informed about the gunfire nearby, Dadu is on high alert. Brody and Louis, now working together, don't have much time to waste. Stumbling upon a room marked by bloodstains and equipped with a camera, Louis checks the recordings. They discover the building has been used for ransom demands. Realizing the urgency, they quickly leave and find a vehicle, aiming to return to their plane as swiftly as they can. Unfortunately, Dadu has beaten them to it. As they approach the plane, Brody abruptly halts the car upon hearing gunshots. They hurry towards the sound, finding Dele under interrogation by the rebels. Brody is about to step in when Louis holds him back. The rebels hold Dele at gunpoint, who reveals that no one knows where they are and Brody went to look for help. They kill a woman trying to escape and make an example of another, before taking the rest hostage. They intend to demand a large ransom for the passengers. The rebel army drives back to the village, leaving two men behind to go through their belongings. Brody rushes out with Louis behind him. They shoot one of the men and question the other, who reveals that Dadu is taking the passengers to a village nearby and will keep them in a warehouse. Brody is going after them, even if Louis isn't. At the HQ, David has received both calls Brody made. He has secured satellite footage of the plane's exact location and is sending his team to drop on site ASAP. Before departing, Brody writes down the name of the village the passengers were taken to, in case the help finds the plane. Louis is with him until the end. They decide to leave their vehicle two kilometers away from the village, choosing to proceed on foot for a stealthier approach. Simultaneously, within the village, Dadu's group begins a grim process. They film the captured passengers, methodically collecting their names and nationalities. This footage is intended for ransom demands. Private contractors, dispatched to the plane's coordinates, provide a live feed to David. As they inspect the aircraft, they discover the casualties along with a message from Brody, confirming a hostage crisis. Meanwhile, near the village, Louis and Brody observe rebels preparing boats for departure. Realizing the rebels are escaping with the passengers, they decide to act swiftly. Choosing stealth over force, they silently take down several rebels, avoiding gunfire to maintain the element of surprise. Spotting the bus, they deduce the passengers are likely held in a nearby house. Navigating the village's narrow alleyways, Louis finds a sledgehammer and swiftly neutralizes the guard outside where the passengers are being held. The hostages silently indicate that there is another guard. While Brody begins the process of freeing them, Louis takes care of the additional threat. With the passengers now freed, Brody formulates a swift escape plan, to board the bus and drive everyone back to the plane, hoping that the help has arrived. Louis notices additional armed guards on their path. Attempting to drive past them would lead to disaster. Facing the dire situation with everyone's hopes resting on his shoulders, Brody makes a bold decision to act as a decoy. He surrenders himself, betting that his value as a captive would prevent the rebels from killing him immediately. Brought before Dadu, Brody claims he has successfully called for reinforcements and that an army is en route to their location, attempting to bluff his way out of danger. However, Dadu doesn't bite. His men beat Brody, and Dadu orders his execution. Just as his orders are about to be carried out, the private military contractors storm the village. They engage the rebels, neutralizing them with precision and swiftly moving to secure Brody along with the passengers. Dadu won't let them leave that easily and orders all of his troops to storm the plane. Unfortunately, Shellback, the military captain, says that they need to hold out 24 hours until extraction. Brody has a plan. At the plane Brody gathers everyone up. He wants to fly everyone out of here, they will not hold out 24 hours. The rest of the military is taking positions, as Shellback notifies Brody they have two minutes until the rebels arrive. He needs more time to patch up the plane. The rebels storm the plane and as the situation looks dire due to the number disadvantage, the sniper, using his huge caliber bullets, mows down the rebels through cars just shows how much better trained soldiers are than a bunch of villagers with zero aim. Brody tells Shellback, once he starts the engine, they have two minutes to board the plane. But Louis is staying, nothing good is waiting for him if he boards the plane. On his way to the plane, Dadu injures Brody, but it's not fatal. He gets to the cockpit, but the electronics are still fried. They will still have to rely on their senses. Louis goes for extra ammo, and finds a bag full of cash, he has a choice to run with it or help hold the line. Brody starts to turn the plane and notifies David that they need a place to land. The rest of the military also run to board the plane, with Shellback seeing Louis take the bag and dip. Seeing everyone boarding the plane, Dadu follows it and tries to stop them from taking off. They load up the RPG and shoot, but Louis once again saves the day. Just as Dadu is about to shoot the next round, he's removed by the plane. More rebel reinforcements arrive, but the plane is already in the sky and Louis has made his way out. They are not out of the woods yet, the plane has lost its right engine. They have a visual of a runway on another island, but they are losing altitude. 
Dele calls to brace for impact and while shakily, they manage to land the plane right at the end of the runway. Finally with the passengers safe, he is relieved. He calls his daughter and apologizes for missing the New Year's Eve. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this.